morning viewers and welcome again to the dynamic program times of refreshing i am minister shola waldron joseph and i am your tv host for today's program but before we meditate on god's word we always like to take the opportunity to pray let us pray father we give you thanks and we give you praise we exalt your matchless name again today, God. We thank you, my God, that we are alive, that we have breath, my God, that we are not dead today. We thank you that we are still in the land of the living. And for that great God, we magnify your name. We glorify your name today. As we are about to meditate on your word today, we pray that the Holy Spirit will bring clarity. The Holy Spirit, the one who has been called to be the teacher, the counselor, the one who, who said that he will guide us into paths of all truth. We invite his presence here today with us. We pray that he will guide and lead and bring clarity and give direction as we meditate upon your word today, great God. Father, have your way. Bless the viewers as they view, great God. Have your way in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My topic today is Be Ye Thou Virtuous Woman. And I'm here today to speak to the woman. And this is based on the discourse taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. And from 25 to 31, and also it's based upon the life of Rahab. Virtue, according to the Oxford Online Dictionary, is defined as behavior that depicts and exhibits high moral standards. It speaks to the conformity of one's life and conduct. It speaks to moral and ethical principles and uprightness. Virtue connotes moral excellence. Some synonyms for virtue are goodness, righteousness, morality, uprightness, integrity, dignity, honesty, decency, nobility, honor, and purity. Woman, all these qualities and more is what God expects us to possess as we seek to become virtuous women. Allow me the time and space to explore the life of Rahab and the woman in Proverbs 31 as a platform for my short discourse. My first point one, Virtuous women equip themselves to adequately take care of their families. Proverbs 31, reading from verses 13 to 16, and it reads, She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. A virtuous woman has the ability to equip herself, herself adequately to take care of her family. I would go to Joshua 2, reading from verse 6. Hallelujah. Joshua 2, 6. And it reads, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And who are we speaking about here? We are speaking about Rahab. Rahab the harlot. Rahab who was called a prostitute. The woman that lived a life that did not bring glory to God. Other than being a harlot, she was an industrious woman. Because the Bible is saying here that she brought them, the men that she hid the spies, and hid them with the stalks of flax which she laid 
in order upon the roof. That tells me that she was a manufacturer of linen. Other than being a prostitute and a harlot, she was an industrious woman. But the Bible said she found ways of being self-reliant. She found ways of taking care of her family. What am I saying to you today? Virtuous women don't sit back and allow things to happen. They make things happen. They're industrious people. They, they seek ways and means of bringing up their, their, their children and ways and means of adequately taking care of their families. The Bible said that woman in Proverbs, she rises it up early. The Bible goes on to say she considereth a feel and bite it. It tells me that this virtuous woman is an entrepreneur. She takes care of her family. Are you a virtuous woman today? Remember, virtue speaks not only of being diligent in business, but it also speaks about moral excellence. It, it, it speaks about living a life that will bring glory and honor to God. It speaks of integrity and nobility. And you might ask the question today, why are you using the life of Rahab as an example? And I'm saying to you, today God would have used this woman to effect change he would have used her he would have changed her life yes she started out as a harlot but the Bible declared that she did something that was extraordinary in the Bible it was extraordinary there were two spies and they were running and they came to her home and Rahab being there, she was in a place that she could have said, okay, I will not hide you because they were enemies of the very land she was living in. But the Bible said she took them upon her roof. She brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them there with stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And you might be asking the question, what was Rahab really doing? She was taking a risk. Virtuous women take risk. Virtuous women possess strength and honor as her clothing. Intuition and moral standards guide her. Joshua 2, reading from verse 1 to 4. And I'm going to read. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged her there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. For they become to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. She took a chance on her life and it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Whither the men went, I want not. Pursue after them quickly for ye shall over take them. Where were these two men? They were on the roof of Rahab. Why did she do that? Intuition. Even though Rahab was an idolic worshiper, she did not worship the true and the living God. But there is a third sense that God gives us as women that somehow we are able to see beyond the normal realm. And I think that is what happened to Rahab that day. She could have sent them away, but the Bible said she took them in. She risked her own life to save God's people. That was one of the things that she did. Let me inform you that virtuous women, they possess strength and intuition. They have another sense beyond the normal senses that we possess. The Bible says she took them in. She risked her own life. Let's go back again to Proverbs 31. I'm marrying the two today. Hallelujah. 
Proverbs 31, verse 25 to 26. Thank you, Jesus. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. That was an act of kindness. She was in a place that she could have sent them away. The Bible says she risked her own life because if she was found out to be harboring the spy, she would have been killed. They would have been killed and she would have been killed also because that was treason. Imagine she harboring the enemies of her, aunt, of her land. But the Bible says she took the risk. She took the risk. Why? She understood that these men were men of God. They were called of God. Because I'm hearing the Bible saying to me that she, was, she said to them, I heard about this God. I heard about this mighty God. This God that parted the Red Sea. And I understand that you are the followers of this great God. They heard about his track record that he had the ability to part the Red Sea. And it was based on that, that she risked her own life. Hallelujah. Virtuous woman, we possess intuition and moral standards that guide us. Hallelujah. Virtuous woman, my third point, fear and honor God. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Virtuous woman, fear and honor God. This Rahab, she was a prostitute and she was an idol, idolic worshiper. She didn't worship the true and the living God. She worshiped Baal. Baal. She worship a God made with stones. But the Bible declared that she saw something in these men. She understood that they were men of the most high God. And she took a risk. There was a fear upon her. She knew that there was something about these men that, that propelled her to hide them. So the Bible says she took a risk. Virtuous woman. Fear and honor God. They, they possess a something that says there is a God and I need to fear him. I need to worship this God. Let us go to Joshua 2. Hallelujah. We are marrying the two texts today. Joshua 2, 9. Hallelujah. Mighty God. And she said unto the men, this is just a scriptural reference. I know that the Lord had given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When he came out of Egypt and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. What was she said? I heard about this great God. His track record goes before him. Virtuous women don't worship idols. Rahab was, she was making a turn around. She understood that this God of Baal that she was worshiping, that was not the true and the living God. She said, we have heard about this God. We have heard about his mighty acts. We have heard that he's a terrible God. We have heard about him. And she understood that these men were men of the most high God. Virtuous woman, I implore you today to fear and honor God. To fear, give your life to this God. Give him your all. As I speak to you, I think about the discourse with Elijah when there was this fight in the Bible between the Lord God and the God of Baal. And the Bible said they were there and they was waiting to see which God was the true and living God. And the man of God told them, prepare the sacrifice. 
and call upon your God. And the Bible said the worshippers of Baal, they prepared a sacrifice and they called on this God Baal. The Bible declares that they called on this God from morning to night and they called and they called and there was no response from this God and probably they were getting tired and weary and they were wondering why isn't this God answering us? And the time came that Elijah said, it's my time. It's my time now. Allow me to call on the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob. And the Bible said he gave them some clear instructions. He told them to wet the sacrifice. Make sure it is soaked, well soaked. Wet it one time, wet it two times, wet it three times. Make sure it's soaked and even the trenches are wrong. Fill it up with water and allow me to call on the God of Israel. And the Bible said Elijah began to call on the Lord God of Israel and this mighty God, this God that Rahab said she heard about, this God that parted the Red Sea, this God that made a way for these kings, this God answered by fire. The Bible said the fire fell and it burnt up the sacrifice and it burnt up all the water in the trenches. Everything was consumed. What a mighty God this God is today. The worshippers of Baal, they were standing by and they were amazed and astonished at the power of this great God. This God that is able to answer by fire. That's the God we are talking about today. The God that answers by fire. I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know what you are faced with today in your life. But I can guarantee you that there's a God that answers by fire. The Bible calls him consuming fire. He answers by fire. When the fire fell, it consumed. Whatever you're facing in your life today, know that when the fire of the Holy Ghost falls upon it, it has the ability to consume it. Know that it can consume it. Let us go on. Virtuous women sometimes take, make sacrifices that could cost them their very lives. And in this case, it was so with Rahab. The Bible, the Bible said she risked her own life in hiding these two spies. That was treason. It was punishable by death. The Bible says she took a risk. Why? Intuition. And as she said, we heard about the acts of this great God. She understood that the God that she was worshipping, that was not the true and the living God. There was a God that was great and terrible and mighty and she needed to get in line with this God. Virtuous women make sacrifices that could cost them their lives. When we think about some of the sacrifices we make for our children and our home, even the church, sometimes it could cost us our very lives. But we do it anyhow because we love God. And we understand the, the, the reason behind what we are doing. Rahab told the men, I will not betray you. When they asked her the question, will you betray us? She said, I will not betray you. Follow me. That was a sacrifice. She risked her own life and she was successful. As I think of that, I think of the woman called Esther. She risked her own life when she was there in the kingdom and word came via Mordecai that they were about to annihilate her people. He came to her and said, Esther, your people, they are in trouble. There is a decree that has been written to an annihilate them. The Bible said Esther didn't get perturbed. She didn't get fussy. She just relaxed. And she said something that is very, very important to us women. Men. She said, Mordecai, I need you to go out there and tell my people, tell my kindred, tell my brethren to proclaim a fast and I will do the same in here with my unmaidens. She didn't get discouraged. She went down in praying and fasting. 
So women, I'm speaking to you today. When the issues of life confront you and you don't know what to do and where to turn, put on the anointing of Esther, the one that says, go tell my people to begin to pray and fast. There are some times you need to call a solemn assembly. There are times in our life that we need to call on the intercessors to proclaim a prayer and fast. Because this one is bigger than you and I. And we need a God that answers by fire to intervene. The Bible declares that some things come not out but by praying and fasting. There are times in our life, virtuous women, we need to proclaim a solemn fast. The Bible said she went down with her handmaidens. And she got back up from the outside. And after that was done, she made a statement that is so, so, so important in church history even to today. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm about to see the king. In that time, if you went into the king and the king did not raise his scepter, you were dead. But Esther said, I'm going to take a race. This means I'm going to take a race because it's either my people die or they live. I'm going to take a race. I'm going to risk my own life for my people. She said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm willing to take a chance on life. I'm going in to see the king. And we know the end of that entire discourse. She was victorious. Come on, virtuous women. We have to make sacrifices that could sometimes cost us our very lives. My fifth point. Virtuous women seek the safety of their families. Proverbs 31 verse 27 and Joshua 2, 12 and 13. Let's go to Joshua first, as we are already here. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that he will save alive my, my father and my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. What was she asking? What was she really asking? She was saying to the spies, after I would have done this great favor for you, and you come back in the city to destroy the city, I'm asking you one favor, that you spare my life, and not only my life alone, but the life of my brethren, of my father, of my mother. She was begging for their lives. She was begging. She said, I've shown you kindness. And I'm begging that you reciprocate that. You show me kindness in return. That when you come in to destroy the city, you will not destroy us with everybody else. That you will remember my token of kindness. A virtuous woman, she could have just said, remember me. But the Bible said, she said, remember me and my family. Virtuous women seek the safety of their families. And my last point today, God still uses broken vessels. Women of bad character, harlots. God used this harlot to fulfill his purpose. Her actions not only save her, but also that of her entire family. You might be broken today and you might say, God, you can't use me. I've come by here today to reassure you that God still uses broken vessels I don't care if you've been tattered and how you have been beaten. Sometimes life would have served us up some raw deals. Sometimes we would have gone through so much in our life. But let me encourage you today, woman, that God still uses broken vessels. Rahab was broken. She was a harlot. She would have slept with men for monetary gains. But God put his hand on this harlot, on this prostitute, and he used her. God could use you today. He can use anything, and he can use you. I'm saying to you today, don't be discouraged. 
Lift your head up. Know that God still uses broken vessels. Know that he's still able to use you. Virtuous woman, God is still looking for you. Virtuous woman, God is still beckoning you. Be ye thou virtuous woman today. Woman, I have come to speak to you. Be thou virtuous. Possess moral excellence as you go through your life. Seek after virtue. Seek after righteousness. Seek after holiness without which no man shall see God's face. Before I close, I always like to take the opportunity to pray for my viewers. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks today. We thank you, great God, for your word that went forth. Oh God, we know that it will not come back void, but it will accomplish that which it was sent to. My God, we lift up the woman in Tobago. Our God, and we pray even now that God, the spirit God of being a virtuous woman will fall on them, oh God. My God, I pray even now that they will seek after, that they will run after moral you use Rahab even though she was broken and she was a harlot and she was tattered and she was torn you still used her God to accomplish your purpose you use her to the extent that her name is in the ancestral line of Jesus Christ she is there in his genealogy father use us as women today to effect change in your kingdom. Father, use us in our homes. Use us on our jobs. Use us in the schools. Cause our lives to bring honor and glory to you, oh God. Father God, this broken woman that is looking at me this morning, I pray, great God, that you will strengthen her with power and might. Oh God, you will cause her to rise up from the place of discouragement and to shake herself in you and know that you can use her if she only surrenders her life to you. So God, we commit Tobago again. We commit Trinidad by extension. We pray, God, that the spirit of the living God will continue to roam through our land in a mighty way. Father God, we just commit our lives to you another day. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I am Minister Shirley Waldron Joseph. And it was indeed a privilege being here with you another day. But until we meet again, I want to extend blessings and peace and prosperity to you and your household. In Jesus' name, amen.